Today I'm going to show you how to use split bolt bugs. Hi, my name is Craig Michaud and I am the electrical instructor. Today we're going to talk about bugs. Not the bugs that creep your crawly around the house. You know, we're going to talk about bugs when we're making connections to an overhead service. And in some cases in large feeder services, sometimes we have to splice in junction boxes, maybe a wire is too short. Uh, maybe we're changing a different direction using a junction box. We have to use what's called a bug. Now, in most cases, you're going to use what we call a high press and you're going to use a compression lug. It's almost like a butt splice type thing. If you don't have that, because those are expensive, you know, a high press alone starts at 1500 bucks or more and most companies don't have that with them. So you should know how to at least splice bugs. Today, I'm going to show you how I splice bugs using rubber friction tape and regular electrical tape. Let's get started. Okay, so right now I have two pieces of number two aluminum. Now, number two aluminum you'll use for a 100 amp service. You're gonna use what we call a split bolt bug. <clears throat> the split bolt bug comes apart, has a little connector piece in between, and then you have your actual lug the bolt slides on and it makes a connection now where would you see this you would see this in an overhead service but like I said you could also see it in a trough or a gutter or something of that nature so how do you make it well first of all we're going to strip the wire now when we're looking at our bug we only want to make sure that we strip enough because we don't want to strip too much insulation Okay, that's more rubber tape we have to put on it. So I'm looking at this, this is about a half inch. So we're gonna strip about an inch. So now that my wire is stripped, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a connection, a parallel connection, okay? So instead of connecting it like this, I'm gonna connect it like this. Again, it's, your preference in some cases you have to do it this way in other cases you have to do it this way again every situation is different so what you're going to do is you're going to take your split bolt and you're going to take that little piece that's in the middle and you're going to split them so what you're going to do is we're going to slide this all the way through going to bring it up just a little bit I'm going to slide it in place and then we're just going to take our hands and we're going to tighten it down okay now is that complete no it's not what we have to do now is we have to tighten this lock nut down a little bit more how are we do that okay so what you're going to need is you're going to need some tongue and groove pliers or better known in the field as channel locks Okay, now I can't pull it, it's on. So what do I have to do? Now I have to cover this. The rule is I have to have my bug insulation twice the thickness of the insulation that is supporting the wire, okay? Meaning I need to put some rubber tape on it and then protect it because remember, you know, the rubber tape is gonna give us that fill for insulation, but remember that electrical tape is rated for 600 volts. And that's what we're trying to protect here. We're trying to make sure that no water gets into this connection and nobody gets hurt from it. So let me show you what I do. This is a roll of one inch rubber tape. Okay, and this one, this rubber tape is very stretchy. Um, I, I can stretch it tight, I can wrap it around. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut myself because I'm using a small, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna cut two two inch pieces that I'm gonna use to wrap, overlap. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, the first thing I do is I've got my pieces cut, and what I'm going to do is, because one side is sticky, I'm going to take that one side and I'm going to wrap it over the top of my wires. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my other and I'm going to start it just a little bit lower right onto the bug typically. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the tape and I'm going to pull it down and around and I'm going to wrap it onto the wire. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap around this way my bug connection. This can be purchased anywhere. I think I picked this up at Lowe's for like $10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take about a foot and I'm going to cut it off. Okay, and again, I've got the paper. The reason there's a paper is because it's, uh, it's, got, it's sticky on one side and if it sits too long in the truck, it's going to get pretty messy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to peel it off. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lower the camera and I'm going to show you and I'm going to wrap it around on how I wrap it around. Remember, there's plenty of ways to do this stuff. This is just the way I do it. And I'm going to start right down at the beginning of the insulation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it. Pull it tight. And I'm going to continue to keep pulling on it until I wrap it all the way up. Once I get to the top, I'm going to wrap it around the, the, the holder knot and I'm going to go right over the top where I actually put my tape. And I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to wrap it around, keep pulling it tight. And pull it tight all the way to the end. There. Now what I have to do is I have to inspect it and make sure I can't see any of the aluminum. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my regular tape. I'm gonna take the electrical tape. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start just below where, my, where the rubber meets the insulation. About a wrap. And I'm gonna pull it tight. Now, as you can see, I'm pulling it as I'm wrapping it, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna make it nice and tight, all right? When you do it like this, that's, that's, not, a perf that's not a good tight connection, okay? So you wanna make sure you, you pull it nice and tight and you wanna zigzag it and wrap it because the whole goal of this is you wanna cover that rubber. You want that rubber to last forever. And you pull it tight and you make a nice connection. Let me show you how to do it with a piece of four up. Okay, so now we're gonna use a different type of connector. We're not gonna use a split bolt. This is also considered a split bolt, but it's not. Because what happens is your conductors are gonna come in here and then you're gonna clamp it down with this nut and carriage bolt. This time I'm gonna show you how to make an inline splice. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to bring my nut all the way to about the end. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to slide my four aught conductors in. just like so. Now what I'm going to do is I got to tighten it down. All right. So now that I've got my bolt all connected, I got my wire brought right up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a socket wrench with a three quarter inch driver and I'm going to tighten this thing right down. Keep in mind, most of the time you're doing that on a ladder. So now I've got my wire in line, okay? I could be working in a junction box, something of that nature, have to make the connection. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna wrap this, instead of wrapping over just the nut, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap the whole thing with rubber tape. But because this is four out insulation, the insulation's a little bit thicker, so I'm gonna use probably about 18 inches worth of rubber tape. Let me show you how to do that. My rubber tape off. I'm gonna do it facing you so it's gonna be a little bit odd for me, but I'm gonna start right at the nut. Put my finger right on it, I'm gonna pull it tight. And I'm gonna start wrapping right over the top. See, as you pull that rubber tape, you can see how much it stretches, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is, because I still have so much left, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring it over to the other side, and I'm gonna start wrapping the other side of the bolt. Okay, now that I'm here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap around this way so I can cover up my connections. nice and tight okay so now that this is done now I have to cover this with regular tape this is where it gets fun I'm gonna start on this side and I'm gonna wrap around my conductors this way going to get all the way over to the conductor. I'm going to wrap past the conductor. And then I'm going to start wrapping the whole thing.
I get to the end, I'm going to start all over. And when it's all said and done with, here's my splice. Okay, it's nice and tight. There's no loose fittings. You know, I have nothing sharp popping through it. I can feel it. But this is what we have. Now, this could be an inline for your service loop. Okay, you can make a connection this way for the power company. You can make a connection this way. You know, have your service loop coming out and make your connection like so. Because remember, water hits this, you want it to do what? You want it to drop off the end and drip off your drip loop. And this is how I do it. You know, I know some people are probably looking at it saying, oh, you need this, you need that, oh, you got to have. Listen, I was taught many years ago that if I put 100 electricians in a room, I'm going to get 100 different ways on how to do something. Did I do it correctly? Yes, I did it correctly in my standards. And this is what I've been taught over the years. So all I'm doing is re relaying the message to you folks. Is this something you may come across? Absolutely, you may come across this, but the average homeowner won't do something like this. But if you're an electrical apprentice or somebody doing electrical work in another country, another state, whatever it may be, and you don't need a license, you know, if you're doing a service, you're gonna have to do a bug. A live bug is, you gotta be careful. You gotta make sure when you're using a live bug, you wear your gloves. If you haven't seen my video uh, using rubber gloves or safety gloves, you know, click the link above, you can watch that. At the same time, you know, for doing a service, it's important that you understand how to make a proper bug. If you're an apprentice and you're working out in the field, listen to every journeyman you work with. If you have four or five different journeymen who show you how to do this type of splicing bugging wires you know take what they've taught you and make it your own when you're done but you got to remember if you're working for me you're doing it my way if you're working for somebody else you're going to do it what you're going to do it their way i hope this helped if this helped do me a favor give me a thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe at the same time if you want to get on to uh, my newsletter list, send me an email at sparkyinstructor at gmail.com. I'm sure it's scanning somewhere around here. I send out email, I send out newsletters once a month. My new one should be coming out soon. As always, have a great day and be safe.